Hello, everyone. So, happened again. I died in lava. Um, <laughs> if, if you watch Icebird's video, you can probably see her actually, you know, breaking the block I was standing on to have me plummet into the lava, which was unintentional. She did not mean to. She didn't realize I was standing on that block. It was just sudden. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't save myself. It was a lava pit. And so I lost most of my stuff. However, oh, there's a creeper outside. We need your gunpowder, sir. Or ma'am. Um, however, we went on a pretty successful mining trip. Off camera. Well, so... Oh my gosh. Okay, that was just a little bit of lag there. So she recorded part of the mining trip, and then... We had the recording, because I had to go to class, and I just, you know, we continued mining and whatnot, so. I got quite a bit of iron, so yay. Yay. <laughs> this is kind of sad. But hey, we can make a Chocopedia. That, that was the main reason I wanted to go to mining, was to make a Chocopedia. <laughs> So we need two ink sacks, four feathers, a book, and lapis. So, okay. So we need a golden nugget. One piece of lapis. Four feathers. A book. And two ink sacks. So let's go get ourselves some paper. I didn't lose anything too valuable this time, so that's good. <laughs> Chocopedia! Wait, aren't I able to, like, click on a Chocobo with the Chocopedia to change their name and such? Where are my Chocobo? Um, you guys were here. There you guys are. Okay, I was kind of worried that I lost my chocobo, though, but okay. They're here. They're safe. If I right click on you with the Chocopedia. Ooh, more feathers. Thank you. Yes, I can rename you. Okay, so name shown. We're going to name you, um. Hmm. What to name you? What to name you? We're going to name you Speckle. Okay, um, so she can breed. Confirm. Oh, you can change the owner, too. That's pretty cool. And then this little lady over here. We need to find them a male. But anyways, she will be called, um, hmm. I'll call her Dawn. There we go. So they're going to be just roaming the yard until I make a little chocobo area, which I do want to make. I want to um, have my geishlas be growing elsewhere so that, ooh, we got our first loverly. I want our geishlas to be grown elsewhere so that way we don't have to have them in the yard taking up space that we can use for our personal crops. But yeah, um, anyway. <laughs> I got, we also killed a silver skeleton on the mining trip, so we got a silver sword. Okay, what else? What else? Ah, red foxes. So I did a little bit of research, and I have a little red fox book. So Vulpus Vulpus is their scientific name. The red fox is a type of canid that can be found in large numbers in the majority of the United States from Florida to Alaska. It has an IUCN status of least concern, meaning their population is pretty stable. They prefer grasslands, forests, mountains, and deserts. I kind of want to implement all of that into their exhibits. Well, probably not the, the bleh, probably not the deserts part, but I would definitely want to include some sand. I want to include like some grassy areas with no trees, some like heavily tree forested areas in their exhibit, and then perhaps a few hills and stuff for their exhibit. However, due to their high adaptability, they can adapt well to human environments, such as towns, farms, and cities. They are omnivores, 
that eat mainly rabbits, rodents, birds, and small animals. However, they are also known to eat fruits, vegetables, fish, and worms. Red foxes can also come in reddish brown and black. Black is also known as silver. Their tail tip is white, unlike the gray fox, since white foxes... White foxes... Red foxes and gray foxes tend to get confused. Um, there is a difference. Like, one of the main ways you can tell between a red fox and a gray fox is their tail tip. Because gray fox tail tips are black. Um, body length ranges from 18 to 33.75 inches. Tail length ranges from 12 to 21.75 inches. Could you imagine a 33.75 inch fox that has a tail length of 21.75 inches? My gosh. That would be a long fox. It would be a worm. Um, red foxes weigh between 6.5 and 24 pounds. They live 2 to 5 years in the wild and have been known to reach 33 years in captivity. They will come together to mate in winter and have their pups in spring. Their, their pregnancy, otherwise known as gestation, lasts 49 to 58 days. Females will have between 2 to 12 pups in the litter, and both father and mother will work to raise the pups. Although they'll separate for the next mating season. Um, at around a year old, the pups will leave their parents in the fall season after they are born. So basically, they stay with their parents from spring through the summer, and then at fall, at some point, they leave their parents to go start their own lives, which basically relieves the parents of the burden of raising them and allows them to have the next litter. Fun facts. Red foxes use their tails for balance, similarly to how cats use, use, ugh, how cats use their tails. I'm sorry. Um, okay. As a warm blanket in cold weather and to communicate with other foxes. They can also hear low-frequency sounds, allowing them to hear their prey in tunnels. So, like, the fox will be above ground, and it can hear the little pitter-patter of the prey's feet. Okay, so, today I want to find the perfect place to build the red fox exhibit. Possibly tame ourselves two red foxes. That way we can name them and keep better track of them. And, yeah. I don't want it to be right here, right here. Like, I kind of... Hi! Hi, Red Fox. You happy? See? See? You can see the little white tail tip. Sorry about that. The white tail tip shows that it's a Red Fox. Um... Hmm. I'm trying to think of where to put it. Where would be a good place to have the exhibit? So it's going to be our first exhibit, so I don't think it should be too far away, but I don't want it close to our squickens, um, just for their protection. Let's, let's chop this tree, because this tree is floating. There we go. I mean, we could have it here and, ha and create this as like some sort of den. Oh, I like that idea. I really do. Okay. Alright, so I know exactly where it is. There's our other red fox that we're going to be taming and bringing into this exhibit. Hello, bunny. Careful, the foxes will eat you. Oh, you, you ran. Okay. I really like this tree. This tree will stay. Because it'll kind of like be right there, right over the exhibit. We have a cassowary egg. I'm going to run home. And put away a few of my things, so that way we have plenty of space in our inventories for when we do everything. Also, also, before I forget to show you guys, I got essence berry bushes, and I got gold, a gold ore berry bush. I would have had three, but I fell into the lava and lost two, so that's okay. But yeah. Oh, and I think they're fully grown. I'm not sure about this. Yeah, that one's fully grown because I remember I harvested from it. A bit ago. Okay. So I'll just put all of that away. Alright. Actually, no, we might need a stack of this. Let's see. 
Oh, I, I definitely do need to make another valuables chest. I have the feeling that I do not have enough room in this chest. I don't know, I just have a feeling. <laughs> okay. Oh, I want my food. And then uh, the Geishlas can go in there. And then salt can go right there. I organized a little bit. I need to still organize this. Why, why are my diamonds in there? I don't understand. I don't understand my logic. Okay, this trapdoor can go, and then the diamonds can go in there. Wait, since when did I have diamonds? Did Icebird leave some diamonds over here? Or did somebody else do that? Because I know Icebird likes to just leave random things around my house. <laughs> Which I'm probably going to do the same to her. Shh. Um, she gave me an anvil. I know that much. Okay. Also, she gave me all that bamboo out there. Alrighty, so. Let's just, I used up my maple diamond pickaxe a little bit. Okay. Let's grab our bone meal. Hmm. I kind of want a whole bunch of different types of trees, but mainly oak. Oak, maybe a few birch. Let's... Actually, before we decorate the exhibit, let's first outline the exhibit. So, let me grab some of this, and some of that, some of that, that, and that. Okay. Wait, don't I have... Did I die with my barriers in my inventory? Oh, that would suck. Yep, I probably did. It's more than likely. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I I didn't I totally didn't almost have a stack of barriers, but that's okay. Of carpenters barriers. Well, ah, well, it happens. Okay, let me grab that and then that. There we go. Okay, so. Turn you all into sticks. There we go, and then more sticks. I'll just do all this. There we go. Boom. Okay. And then... I feel like that's good, right? No. No, it's not. Because I need a gate. There we go. That's, that's more than enough, I feel. I feel like that is definitely more than enough. Okay. shift cook because I don't want to turn that fence gate white. Alright. So, hmm. Right here it is. So I think, I like this little area because it's kind of like grasslandy at the moment because I kind of destroyed a whole bunch of trees. Alright. So... their exhibit to be kind of big. I want them to have lots of room to roam. Um, okay. Where to... Well, let's do it right here. Kind of thick fencing.
go down with the landscape. And then let's kind of go out through this way and then just keep going. We don't want Geishlas in there except because I don't think Geishlas fit. <laughs> so. Hi, little guy. We're getting the exhibit all set up for you. Put some tea leaves and tea trees in there. I think that would be cool. But I kind of want it to kind of loop around like that. Yeah, I think that's a decent size. Because we do want the visitors to be able to see the animals. So if they can't see the animals, like, that would kind of suck, but you know. I'll want the gate right here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Go down a bit and then we'll just kind of loop around. I feel like there was much point to doing that, other than creating an interesting look to the exhibit. Okay, we're going to have to edit the terrain within the exhibit a little bit, but I think this will be a really nice start. I'm definitely keeping this tree right here. Do I want the spruce tree? I kind of don't. I don't think it would fit in with the rest of the exhibit. So I'm sorry spruce tree, but you have to go. Okay, let's pick these up because I want to scatter these throughout. You know, to give them little stuff to nibble on and eat as they see fit. No! Did I break the tree? I broke the tree. I feel so dumb. Okay. Darn it! I said I want to keep that tree and then I broke the tree. Okay. So. Let's break some of this dirt. Like that. Probably both of these. Break this a little bit. There we go. Okay. I want to also put some of you guys around. Okay. So let's start by planting some oak trees. Starting with this one. No, it's short! No, why I crouch? Let's try this again, shall we? 
There we go. That's a decent sized tree. Yeah, so I definitely want here to be kind of like the little den. So let's just do it like so. And then kind of have this like so. I've got to go get more dirt. Okay, let's go grab more dirt and a shovel. Okay. There's quite a lot to do, but that's okay. I really want this exhibit to look nice. There we go. Um, let's just grab that. Let's go throw some of the seeds into the seed chest. Seed, seed, seed. There we go. And then some dirt. And then a shovel. Let's do some stone shovels. I have plenty of cobble. All right, um, let's see. I think next episode we're going to continue work on the fox exhibit. It has been 22 minutes already, so we'll resume work on the fox exhibit next episode, and then hopefully we'll have it ready for them to move in in a few episodes. Yeah, I will see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone!